non-classicist out there. Uh, See, so you get a free Latin lesson right off the bat. Uh, this is the first episode of Quick Classics. I just couldn't resist making uh, the the first uh, video lecture for uh, the preparation for Roma X. So this is going to be a, a probably a three or four part uh, lecture on the uh, history of ancient Rome, beginning with the origins of Rome today. And the origins of Rome are lost in a kind of, well, lost is probably the wrong word. The origins of Rome have both mythic and historical foundations. That is to say that uh, if you read sources like Titus Livius, or Livy, as his name is often shortened to, if you read his history of early Rome, you get the account of all the founding myths, uh, such as uh, uh, Aeneas, uh, one of the refugees, Trojan refugees from the, the Trojan War, which was an actual historical event, uh, was said to have made his way to uh, the Italian peninsula and sort of uh, uh, odyssey fashion, that was the word that I was looking for, uh, and sort of recounted in such terms by Virgil. Um, what we do know about the people that eventually did become the, the Romans, the, the Latin tribes, is that they, they were Indo-European. Um, they were part of uh, the waves of migration coming out of Central Asia uh, that made up peoples in Southern, Central, and Western Europe, such as the, the Greeks and, of course, the Romans. And in the, the European Bronze Age, uh, the, the Italian peninsula was essentially uh, tribal. It was ruled over by a number of different tribes, including the aforementioned Latins. Now, as to the mythic foundations of Rome and the connection with the Trojan War, probably not. It's hard to say, but at least Livy got the direction right that these people were coming from the East. Now. I should also qualify that these founding myths are important because the Romans believed that they were true. And so that's a very important piece of uh, ancient Roman culture. Uh, Aeneas is a lesser known founding myth. Um, it was said that uh, uh, Evander, an Arcadian, also made his way to the Italian peninsula and established uh, a village outside of what would become Rome. Uh, Evander, I think L Livy also says that Evander brought uh, the worship of Pan uh, to the Italian peninsula. Again, much of this is lost in the myths of, of early Rome's history. Um, the founding myth that's most important uh, of course, is the story of Romulus and Remus. Romulus, of course, being the one from whom Rome takes its name. Uh, the story behind Romulus and Remus that we usually get in school is kind of G-rated. We get the Disney version, um, but uh, it's really kind of a, a savage story. And Romulus and Remus were twins uh, born of a vessel virgin named Rhea Silvia. Rhea Silvia, however, uh, as the story goes, was raped by the god Mars, and the product of the union, uh, of course, was Romulus and Remus, uh, having a kind of semi-divine and divine nature. Uh, it's a story not unlike what you find in, in uh, other myths of, of early kings like uh, Gilgamesh, in the Sumerian king's list, who was said to be of, of divine and human pedigree. Uh, and, of course, the, the Nephilim, who were spawn of uh, the, uh, the watcher angels and human females. So there's some patterns here uh, to take note of. At any rate, Romulus and Remus are... Um, 
basically on their own uh, very early on and a she-wolf uh, takes them and suckles them. This is a very iconic image in Roman iconography uh, which is important all the way from its foundations all the way through the empire you find this image of the two twins being suckled by the she-wolf uh, eventually uh, to distill some things uh, Romulus and Remus are raised by a distant relative who reveals their pedigree and uh, Romulus and Remus found uh, the city-state of Rome What's interesting here is that we do know that uh, the regal period begins with the first king of Rome who was named Romulus. What we're likely dealing with here is a historical figure who has been mythologized, again not unlike Gilgamesh. Uh, that's not to say that the that there may not, may not be something supernatural, I, I think there's a very good chance that that's, that's the case. Uh, but what we do know is that the first king of Rome, and first of the seven kings during the regal period uh, in Rome's history, was named Romulus. And it's this early period that often doesn't get its due credit in courses on Roman history. Uh, the period between 753 BC, the actual founding of the city state of Rome, uh, and the uh, establishment of the Republic in 509 BC mark uh, the beginning and end of this regal period in Rome's history. This sort of foundational, consolidational period uh, in the development of Roman culture. And this period is important for a number of reasons because it's, it's where a lot of basic foundational Roman values come from. Uh, and One of the bases for this is the, is the religion of ancient Rome, which we typically think of as, as something that's al analogous or interchangeable with Greek religion, when in fact, uh, Roman religion before it was impacted by Greek religion was something very distinct. Uh, in fact, the, the Roman gods, collectively known as noumena, and there are lots of, of different kinds of these these gods. Uh, there's a whole uh, taxonomy of the different kinds of Roman gods. Uh, but they were raw forces of nature. They weren't the, the anthropomorphic deities like the Olympian gods were. Um, uh, very much more akin to the animistic and totemistic spirits uh, that peoples in non-industrial, non-literate cultures uh, worship. There were gods for almost every conceivable aspect of life. Um, there were uh, uh, gods like Neptune, uh, who is the, uh, the god of rivers and waterways and earthquakes. Uh, of course, the, the, the sort of Olympian-style deities like Jupiter, the king of the gods. Mars, who was the god of war, from which the, the month of war takes its name, March, uh, was also a god of property boundaries as well. Uh, but there were some uniquely Roman deities like Janus, who was the god of uh, beginnings and gateways and doors, uh, and was often placated before even other gods were because of the nature of Janus and it's from his name that the month of January takes its takes its name. Uh, there were other deities like Pomona, the uh, the god of goddess of the harvest uh, and uh, Faunus, a kind of uh, satyr-like deity uh, much akin to Pan uh, that in, in many ways were uniquely Roman. That's these were gods that were worshipped in the public sphere um, and, and in the private sphere as well. But that that brings me to my next point: is that there were two spheres of religion. There was public religion, private religion, the religion of the home, 
and within the home it was the paterfamilias or the male head of the household who was in charge of the rites and ceremonies uh, of reverence of the ancestors and the particular patron deities uh, of that, that household. Tradition was very important in Roman families. Uh, if it was good enough for your, your father and good enough for you, then it was good enough for your son and so on and so forth. Very Roman virtue. In Roman religion, it was also uh, customary to have a, a whole host of, of uh, priests and diviners. Uh, in fact, um, the king, the rex, in addition to having political authority, also had religious authority. He was a kind of high priest, and uh, when the, the rex was overthrown, uh, with the, uh, the establishment of the Republic, uh, the Rex was retained as the uh, as, as the a kind of priest. The, the Rex Sacrorum is what they called him. But politically, Rome was this autocratic monarchy um, ruled over by the king, the Rex. Uh, the Senate uh, at this time was simply the governing council of the king. That's right. The Senate was not an elected body of officials in the regal period. Uh, these were largely wealthy landowners and aristocrats, uh, the patricians, if you will, the haves of Roman society, uh, who ruled over the rest of Roman society, um, known as the plebeians. And so here you have a kind of, of sampling of what Roman culture was like during this period of monarchy and consolidation of the Italian peninsula which happened over the largely over the course of this regal period as this small village on the Tiber grew into uh, a city-state. But it was a city-state that if we're to believe Livy was born in, as we've already seen, rape and eventually murder uh, because Livy also tells us that uh, Romulus and Remus got into a, a, a disagreement about the boundaries of their respective districts. And the disagreement eventually led to Romulus murdering his brother Remus and taking sole control of the city. <clears throat> Again, these stories are largely within the purview of mythology and, and certainly retain an element of historicity, but it's important to remember that the Romans believed this and that was a, 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 an important part of their culture as far as they were concerned. These were, these were the foundations of Roman society, the Roman state, uh, Roman virtues like austerity and honor and tradition were also established during this period. Uh, the Roman family uh, was the building block of, of the Roman state, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go along. But one thing to remember about ancient Rome and the family is that the family was very important. If you watch movies about Rome or series about Rome, you'd be tempted to think that uh, it was just uh, gratuitous sex and orgies and, and bloodshed and gladiatorial combat the whole time. Uh, just as now, uh, the, the, the jaded elite indulge in, in a lot of those sorts of things, that's the, that was typically the, the element of Roman society that you had indulging in those kinds of things as well. Most people uh, viewed marital fidelity with a high degree of respect, and in fact, in some uh, neighborhoods there were stiff penalties for uh, adultery. So I hope that I presented a, a kind of distilled version of, of what life was like, uh, and at least what culture was like in the regal period uh, leading up to the foundation of the Roman Republic. This is very important to put these pieces in place before a discussion about Rome can continue. So, until next time, Godspeed.